Cage Warriors lightweight contender Jack Grant. Thank you, Jack, for the time, man. Uh, how's life for you right now? Yeah, really good, man. Uh, and thank you for your time, also. No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, now where are you sitting? I think I saw that you were in Germany and you've been doing camp over there. Yeah, so I've been out in Dusseldorf. I've done uh, I've done my training camp out there, but now I'm uh, I'm back home. I'm at my uh, I'm just currently at my mum's house. Uh, yeah, she's helping feed me and keep me healthy for this fight. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. You need that mother's love right before the fight. Yeah, too right. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the last couple times we saw you in competition was at Grapple Fest. You know, you went 2-0, and flying an armbar finish. What do you get most out of competing in grappling events, do you think? Uh, to be honest with you, I just like the... Uh... I, I just love jiu-jitsu. I'm, I'm really passionate about jiu-jitsu. Uh, I watch it all the time. And, uh, you know, my goal, I have some pretty big goals for jiu-jitsu as well as MMA. And I just want to, uh, I want to really be successful in both. I want, I want to show that I can be as well, you know. But, yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of pros, a lot of MMA fighters, they don't compete in, in grapple events because they kind of. Yeah, because they're scared of losing <laughs> because they've got an ego. That's why. Because <laughs> yeah. they're like. They think because they're MMA, like, oh, this and that, and then somebody will have a bragging right over me. But I don't care about that at all. Like, my goal is to beat the best pure jiu-jitsu guys possible, uh, even good MMA guys in jiu-jitsu as well. And, uh, yeah, and I've been doing that, you know. I've been doing that for quite a long time now, and I, I get a lot out of it. I find it really motivating, and, uh, yeah, it keeps me active, keeps me sharp. Yeah, and also I feel like it give, brings another threat, you know what I mean? Like people will go and watch you in your grappling events too and they'll see like, oh, this guy, he's got some, you know, other skills, other, you know, weapons in his arsenal. Like, you know, like a Gilbert yeah. Burns, you know what I mean? He's like probably the highest level of guy that you can see that has been, you know, he's about to fight for the UFC title and he's been very successful in grappling. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, beauty of grappling is you can actually be more... Um, you can be more free because there's obviously some things that you uh, you certainly you know you you maybe wouldn't risk in MMA because of the uh, the ground and pound and whatnot. But like for example, like if I go to a tournament, uh, I can I can jump techniques, I can I can jump triangles, arm bars, uh, you know anything really. So it's it's nice to be creative and it's um, it's a nice way to uh, gain experience without taking that uh, head damage, getting punched. Even in a MMA fight, I see that early in your career you did land a, a a calf slicer which is pretty difficult to to complete in an mma fight yeah yeah well actually weirdly enough i watched uh <laughs> i watched luke rockall do a breakdown like three uh -huh. days before that fight <laughs> and uh i was in that position and i was like oh that technique <laughs> it just like entered my head and yeah and i went from there and i pulled it off <laughs> nice 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 now well you know turning you know the the tide a little bit to something negative and i don't know if it's negative but something not as positive is, is the covid man it hit in february march around then you had a fight in F april i believe it was canceled what were the emotions uh, like around that time oh really bad i mean i flew out to holland originally to help one of my teammates mark casey um it was really frustrating time for me as well i wasn't gonna go but my uh, granddad like wanted me to go i left my granddad on his deathbed to to go there and, and see that camp out and, uh, yeah, just when I come back, I just, it was terrible, you know, especially with the COVID hitting. But, you know, I, I feel like I did the right thing. And I've had now, including this camp, I've had two solid camps. I mean, training at Nick Hemmers is no easy going thing, you know, like that's, that's a fantastic gym, amazing coaching. And, uh, yeah, I feel like um, the positive step from that is, is the skills I've picked up, you know. I think I've got a lot to show now, so. Well, before, you know, you went into the camp, did you continue training throughout those months or did you just kind of sit no, back and like, take some time out? Oh, as soon as, uh, as, soon as my fight got canceled, that was it. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't do all this uh, COVID training and I just did. I literally was just doing COVID drinking and PlayStation and, mm -hmm. and just doing things that um, I, I do like, but not. Not to indulge in them that much, do you know what I mean? Like I was, I was really excessive with <laughs> with my laziness and uh, my my eating, and yeah, it wasn't good. But you know, uh, I, maybe I needed it. Maybe I needed that little blowout. So you know, and then I'm back on it now, and I I feel great. And if if anything, it's reminded me of how good it feels to feel this good. You know. 
<laughs> when did you uh actually get back to training with with training partners in the gym? Oh God, months. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I stuck to the isolation. I, I wasn't doing any of uh, the secret training stuff. I think I did like maybe four runs. Um, I can remember I've never really stopped on a run in my life, and I, uh, I, I tried to run three mile, I think, and I fucking stopped like one and a half mile. I thought I was gonna die. So like, uh, yeah, I really did. I, I got really unfit during that period of time, but you know, it's it's all uh, it's all living and. It's good, you know. I'm I'm happy to be back. Well, yeah, you're back on September 25th against Yazin Belhaj. Did you know who he was before you were offered him? Uh, no, not really. I didn't really take too much of a look of him. I just said yes uh, because I need a fight. So whatever they offer me, I'll just say yeah. And um, I, I believe I'm ready to fight anyone. I want to, you know, I want to fight the best on the organization and the best on the next organization that I go to or whatever, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Just give me an opponent. I'll train hard and, and we'll make it happen. Have you gotten to sit down and, and look him up? Is there anything online you can find about him? Yeah. So I have had a look at him. Um, he's a really good, uh, like Taekwondo style. He's actually uh, a world champion in Taekwondo. So yeah, so I, he's got really good kicks. He kicks ever so well. Um, yeah, and I just want to bring the pressure and I want to implement my game. I don't want to, I don't really tend to watch too much of opponents. I tend to watch uh, how they come out each round. Like, to me, that's one of the most important parts, just seeing how they come out. Like, are they going to shoot every time they come out or are they going to stand or do they, you know, do I need to slow them down early on? And that's about it, you know, and then I just concentrate on myself after that. What about the, the empty arena? Do you think that has an effect on people? Like, even if, if they're fast starters, they might become slow starters. I don't know. <laughs> I, do you know what? I actually just think it's going to be the same once mm. once it gets to the point where uh, you're announced and you touch gloves and you go. I think it's going to be exactly the same. But it is boring. It's like I get a lot of energy from the crowd and I'm sure a lot of other fighters do. Uh, and also I do embrace that pressure. I feel like it brings me on a lot. So, yeah, no, it's good. You know, it is what it is. It's just a different experience and I'm I'm looking forward to it. How many weeks did you spend out in Germany for this camp? Uh, five or six weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really good. I mean, UFD gym was fantastic. Uh, loads of training partners. Um, yeah, they, you know, they're making the most of this. They're, they're working hard still. They, you know, they've, they've got a really good thing going on there. So I'd probably even visit again for sure. Were you surprised by the level of MMA? Because you don't really hear about Germany too much in, in the world of MMA? Uh, no, I wouldn't say I was surprised because uh, I knew quite a few of the guys, um, the, the bigger names there. So usually wherever there's big names, there's going to be a lot of other names that are, are due to break through. So, yeah, I was expecting it to be good and it, it, it definitely met my uh, expectations. All right. So how do you see this fight playing out against Yazin? Um, if I'm totally honest, I, I think... I just need to pressure him. I, I believe. Um, I believe I'll finish him. I, I, I say this every time, um, but my record does suggest that I can finish opponents. You know, like I'm not. I'm not short of finishes on my record, and I, I just truly believe I have got uh, devastating power at this weight class, and also my submission skills. I, I believe if he plays jiu-jitsu with me, uh, he's getting submitted as well. So. I'm very confident that I can finish in first or second round, but I'm prepared to go all three. And uh, the key is just have fun in there and, and, and put it on him, you know, bring it yeah. to him. Just let it go, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's just a fight, you know. It's it, it, uh, You can overcomplicate these matters. And uh, on, the, on the night, that's my main goal, just reminding myself to enjoy the, the experience. You know, it's still an experience, even though it's high pressure uh, and, you know, don't drown in it. Just remind myself to enjoy it. Uh, I did this in Sweden and I had a fantastic three-round fight mm -hmm. with somebody that I didn't really know. Um, and, yeah, that was probably one of the most enjoyable fights I've had today. So I just need to do this again, repeat the process. Since you are coming off a, a title challenge and there's a, a new champion in the division, how far do you think you're from another crack at that title? I think if I can uh, put a great performance on this time round, mm -hmm. I don't see why I can't get another shot. I, I think it's very evident that I am 
one of the best, if not the best, in in the lightweight category. I'm I'm an absolute monster at this weight, and uh, when I'm when I'm on it and I'm firing, um, you know, I'm, I'm an handful for anyone, and I can't finish anyone. So, you know, people want to see that. They don't want to see like these boring fights. You know, like I, you very rarely see me in a boring fight, even when I'm losing it. So, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's due excitement, win or lose with me. And, uh, I, you know, this time it's my turn to win and I'm, I'm there for the W 100%. You know, you get a win over here, you know, the title shot could be there in a couple of months. But then also there's the, the contender series that's happening in November, I believe, again. Do you see maybe a possibility of sliding in there, maybe? Uh who knows? I mean, to be honest with you, the contender series isn't really something that's ever interested me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I like I want to be chosen by the UFC if mm-hmm. if if that's a possibility. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to like chase organizations. There's money in many organizations now, so like I'd like to be picked for the UFC. That'd be that's mm-hmm. my that's my goal, and I believe mm-hmm. as soon as I get that belt, I will be picked. Well, well, Fight Island is 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 all there too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I want to be active. Like, it's been really frustrating. I've had a lot of injuries, um, like built, like not in this, but like prior to this back to back, I had like a few injuries and I'd never had that before. So that set me back a lot, but I want to be active. So, uh, my body's good now and I just, you know, I'm willing to have quick turnarounds. 100%. 100%. So if I'm on UFC Fight Island, that I wouldn't even mind doing what that guy's doing, you know, just back to back. Just give me a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kamzad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a killer, man. He, man, he's doing everything that he I said he's going to do. Because I'm, I'm good at wrecking names, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't good at wrecking names, though? I know, I'm terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, but going back to what you said, you know, like, that's a, I feel like that's a good attitude to have about moving on to promotions you know what i mean it's like oh, who's going to give you the biggest money who's going to give you the, yeah, I mean, the, the better chances money, right? opportunities yeah a million percent this is you know fighting's too short to just be fighting for the sake of fighting like you know i want i want to earn money doing this and uh, i believe i can and i know there's loads of organizations that will take me on that pay big money so yeah it's just yeah, it's just seeing what's next. You know, I, my my current goal is to win this fight, not looking past this guy, and get my title shot that I feel I deserve and win that title this time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think exciting times ahead. All right. Well, you know, first stop is uh, September 25th, Cage Warriors 115, Manchester. Thank you, Jack, for the time. All the best, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking soon. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate your time also. And, uh, yeah. This guy's getting finished. (laughs) Let's get it. It's go time.